Okay, so we are live, and I've got another G.I. Joe classified series to unbox, and this one is General Clayton Hawk Abernathy. Now, for those of you who uh, remember, for those of you who don't, uh, General Hawk was one of the first of uh, the original G.I. Joe characters that was put out. He wasn't a general at that time. He was a colonel. Uh, he came with the mobile missile system, and it was basically like, uh, you know, a figure that shared a lot of parts with a lot of other figures, like a lot of uh, figures in that first wave did. So, like, from the neck down, the mold was exactly that of Stalker, Snake Eyes, Grunt, uh, and most of Breaker. Breaker had different arms. Hello, Sean Franklin. Welcome. Uh, so, uh, yeah, the, so so a lot of that same web gear. Uh, but, I don't know, like, like, and the head was Flash. It was the same head as Flash and Steeler and who else used that head? Short Fuse. And it was another blonde guy. So, basically, it, it looked like he had the same head as Short Fuse. And, honestly, I didn't think that head was a, a particularly good choice for Hawk because it was kind of the most boyish looking of those heads. Uh, I don't know if the grunt head would have really worked either. So uh, basically the way he was drawn in the comics looked a lot like what you later think of as Duke. And uh, so when Duke showed up, it was kind of confusing. <laughs> so when they did the second Hawk figure in 1985 and decided to revisit the character, the character had darker hair. And since this is more based off that 1985 figure, uh, they gave him the darker hair. But it looks like they also put some gray streaks in there, which I like. You got some uh, close-ups there of uh, there he is with the helmet, and there he is with a little pouch, pouch, little patch on his shoulder that says Yo Joe, and it's got that uh, GI Joe star logo with the stripes on it. So, uh, so yeah. So there's all the accessories he comes with. You got two handguns, a shotgun, a uh, burp gun. I believe all these weapons are recycled. You got two pairs of goggles. One should fit over the top of the helmet. One should fit over his face. You got a helmet. And uh, there's a picture of him on the side. Nice portrait of General Hawk. You got the classic bomber jacket kind of look. If we look up here over his shoulder, we see a fellow flying with a jetpack, which is really confusing because you know who that is with the jetpack? That's General Hawk. That's that's the '90s General Hawk figure that came with a jetpack. So uh, he's he's flying over his own shoulder, and then down here, if you look between his knees, you can see the Triple T tank. Maybe they're planning on making that. That would be pretty cool. I'd like to have uh, the Triple T tank, and that looks like a motorcycle in the background. That's probably the Ram again. So, uh, and then of course the uh, building in the background is. The G.I. Joe headquarters, as depicted on the classic Sunbow animation. We've got the QR code right here, which uh, I've never scanned any of these QR codes. And I would do it on the show if I weren't filming it with my cell phone. <laughs> so, and it does still have those little funky esoteric symbols on there that I have no idea what any of those mean. So, uh, let's go ahead and open them up. This is the last of this batch of figures to show up. I don't know why he was lollygagging so much. Even the even the uh, Helix figure that apparently was supposedly damaged and they had to send out a replacement got here before this one did. For whatever reason. Don't ask me why. All right. So let's go ahead and get that out of there. And there is General Hawk in the package. He looks, when I was looking at the uh, the digital file, I thought he would maybe looked a little bit like Bruce Campbell. But now that I have him in hand, I think who he really looks like is uh, the old man from Christmas Story. You know, Kolchak, the Night Stalker. Darren McGavin, that's the actor's name. He looks to be like, kind of like Darren McGavin. So, uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny. And then here we go. Here is the Foot Locker, which will have all these accessories in it. You can see it says General Clayton Hawk Abernathy on there. 
Hawk is another character that uh, they lost the copyright on the name some time ago. Uh, another action figure company, I believe it was Lannard, for their corpse line, snatched that lineup. So they have a character named Hawk in the corpse. The core. I don't want to pronounce that actually correctly, but none of us kids said the core. We all said the corpse. <laughs> I still say the corpse. I don't care if it's correct. Particularly <laughs> the core with an exclamation point on there. So you should always exclaim it when you say it. So uh, there's the gray launcher and fans of the uh, the retro carded gung ho figure. They're familiar with this baby, so let's set that aside. And here is the shotgun. And I believe this is the same shotgun that came with CoverGirl. Got a little warped because it doesn't have a cardboard piece on there to protect it. So we'll set that aside. Hopefully I can fix that. Um, here is his helmet. And this is like uh, what in 1985 would have been a modern style Fritz helmet, which I believe is what the... Uh, the 1982 Joes, their helmets were kind of based off of, but I guess to kind of aid with them fitting on the heads that are a little more rounder, they look to me more like a, almost like a baseball batter's helmet, but without the brim on it. Do you like the Wizard of Oz and Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? Yes, I very much enjoy both of those movies. Uh, very much enjoyed both of the books when I read them when I was a kid. Uh, I even like the, the remake of Willy Wonka, the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which technically is closer to the book, but, but I don't like it as much as I like the original movie, you know, sometimes things work better in a movie than they work in a book. And sometimes things work better in a book than they work in a movie. But, but yeah, I liked, I liked uh, both versions of that, but the original one's still my favorite. So there is one of the handguns and this one to me looks kind of vaguely like the one that the, uh, the 90s edition of Dusty, I think it was version 3 of Dusty came with, it was kind of vaguely like that one, but blown up. A little bit of a longer magazine. I think this might be the same one that came with Gung Ho, which uh, I have the Gung Ho figure, I have the, the gun that came with him over here so I can compare. And yes, that is indeed the same gun that came with Gung Ho. Now, you can see this isn't Gung Ho. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well take an excuse to show him off a little bit. This is the crystal ball custom that I made. I should probably make uh, some more shorts with some of these custom figures on there, since I've got a few more of them. But yeah, that's a that's crystal ball. That's a custom I made. I printed out the head and the shield and the shoulder armor. That's all from Donman Art Collectibles, and uh, the body is a Zamot or a Tomax or whoever, whichever one it is. And I sculpted the fur over his shoulders with some milliput. Are you going to see the Wonka prequel? Ah, uh, I'll probably see it when it hits streaming. I haven't had a whole lot of time to go to the theater these days, unfortunately. There's a lot of movies that I've wanted to be seeing at the theater and haven't had a chance to. So, but I'll uh, I'll definitely check it out when it hits streaming. Hopefully, it'll be good. All right, we got some more stuff in here. We got to go over. I think that that's it, other than these last few things. So we have this other pistol, which has got like just a little bit of a silencer on it. This little short suppressor. Ah, I don't remember what figure this came with, but I'm sure it, I've seen it before. It's got a little star on the on the grip. So that's neat. I wish I could remember what character this came with. Maybe it was the one that came with CoverGirl. I don't remember. But I'm sure I've seen it before. And then we've got the two pairs of goggles. One of the, this one will fit over his head. So, uh, all right. So I've got some of the accessories on my work table. i got some of the accessories over here on this tray table. Let's go ahead and get the figure out of here. Exacto knife. And I'm just going to carefully cut through little plastic tabs that they use to hold the figure into the Plastic free packaging. And then we'll have them out. We'll have them out. Or as they say in Canada, we'll have them out. Shout out to any of my viewers from Canada. All right. So there we got 
our good general out of the package. And it seems like his uh, web gear has kind of slid up a little bit. It was like way over where his neck was there. And I believe it's supposed to be down on the other side of this wool collar here. Trying to get it adjusted right. And I don't want it to cover any of his uh, medals or ribbons or any of this stuff that he has. Because there's a lot of good detail here. And I just don't want to hide it. But you can see like he's got various uh, medals, various ribbons. He's got, uh, you know, what looks like it should be like an airborne badge over here, but it doesn't have a parachute on it. It has a star on it. And then he's got all these combat ribbons down here on his on his jacket. It almost makes you want to just take this thing off entirely. Because honestly, like, uh, it doesn't fit on him as well as it should. So ideally, you would probably want this strap to go underneath the collar, but it's impossible to do that because it literally is like one solid piece there. It's not even like a, a little rubber piece for the collar here that you could peel up and stick it under there. He's got a single star on uh, on each of each side of his collar there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that to focus correctly, but it looks pretty cool. Like uh, I'm glad that it's got those stars on there. That's nice. So, and uh, he's got the belt with a eagle on the buckle. And uh, there's two different buckles here. Both of them are painted in brass because it's two different belts. And is there anything else to point out? He's got, he's got an American flag on his shoulder, and it's like a monochromatic, like almost like a desert camouflage American flag. And it is uh, correctly aligned where uh, no matter what side of the uniform it's on, the, the field with the stars should be facing towards the front of the character as if he's charging into battle with an actual flag trailing behind him. So even if it was on the other side, you want to put it like reverse of how you usually think of an American flag. And then he's got that little patch on the shoulder that says Yo Joe on it. So that's pretty cool. So the uh, look of Hawk from the 80s, well, I say 80s, but like the original one was from the 80s. The, the look of Hawk from 1986, I think I might have said 85 earlier, but it's actually 86, I'm correcting myself. Somebody will say that in comments who hasn't watched the whole videos. Actually, you mean, you mean 1986, not 1985. And um, yeah, yeah, watch the whole video before you correct me. Sometimes I say stupid stuff. It's like, <laughs> I'm doing these live and, and sometimes I'll just misspeak. So, uh, yeah, but uh, let's go ahead and go over the articulation. So his arms rotate all the way around like that. He's got a bicep cut. So his arms rotate at the bicep. And this is a flat bicep cut, by the way. It doesn't have like where, you know, kind of like uh, they, they, they make it shaped so that it hides that articulation line. Now, they didn't bother this time. It's, it's just a straight up cut. Uh, his elbow is really tight, so I'm just kind of coaxing it. Never force your joints. That's how you break action figure joints. But uh, this one, this one seems like it's going to be, this one seems like it's going to be the hair dryer treatment. This one, this one I got to move eventually. So he's got gloves, which the original Hawk didn't have gloves, and they look to be the same hands that uh, Tomax and Zamot use, where it's almost like, like hands set up for archery, even though he doesn't have a bow and arrow. Oh, yeah, they painted in the zippers on his pockets. Those are painted in. So there's a lot of good detail in this figure. And then he's got camouflage pants, which looks kind of like a grayish color over an olive green. So I already pointed out these two belts. He does not have an ab crunch. He instead has like a, almost like a 25th anniversary kind of joint here. But because of the jacket, the joint itself is very tight. Not not like tight as in the plastic is new and needs to be broken in. I mean like the joint itself, the way it's designed. It's fairly tight. So you can get some movement out of it, but not as much movement as you might like. So, and then uh, another joint down here, uh, at the bottom of the jacket where it meets the pelvis. Some of that. He's got that kind of rubbery trunk piece. Like a lot of these... Uh, Classified figures have that kind of help hide the joint. 
He's got the drop down hips. So there we go. Legs move up about that far. Uh, got double jointed knees, which again, super stiff. But I got that one to move. And then I got the other one to move. Okay, got it. So there. Good range of motion on the knees. All right. So then we have a boot cut. So this boot rotates all the way around. And then we got the rocker ankles, which go down about that far, go up about that far, and kind of rotate all the way around because they rock our ankles. So that's pretty cool. All right. And the head sculpt looks a lot more like Darren McGavin than I was expecting. So he'll 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 be nice and give Ralphie a, a Red Rider BB gun this Christmas. So that'll be cool. So let's uh, go ahead and get into these accessories. And I'm expecting this helmet to fit kind of loosely on the head. It's going to be the same thing that they had with Dusty where they intended for you to put the other pair of goggles underneath the helmet. And I don't really like that so much. I would prefer for just the helmet to just fit on there tightly. So let's go ahead and we'll put the goggles over his eyes so we can see what that looks like. There he is with the goggles over his eyes. Let's go ahead and put the helmet on him. And that's what he looks like with the goggles and the helmet all together. So there's that. Now it stays on fairly well. There's a little bit of a dent in the helmet right there. You see it kind of like Boba Fett. So I kind of wonder if that was like a deliberate homage to Boba Fett. I would not think of all characters to homage Boba Fett in G.I. Joe. To, I would not think to pick uh, uh, General Hawk. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, you know, whatever. It, it's nice. I appreciate the reference. And then uh, this pair of goggles should fit uh, over the top of the helmet. And hopefully the little rivets will help it. There's a little rivet sculpted on there. Hopefully that will help it stay. And he does have, I, I didn't point this out earlier, he does have the little star on the helmet also. So he is a one-star general, a brigadier general, I believe is the uh, proper term. Like I said, originally he was a colonel, and the uh, the generals over G.I. Joe would have been, like, the, the immediate general would have been General Flagg, who was murdered by G Major Blood. That was how they wrote him out of the comic. And uh, General Austin, General Ironbutt Austin was the general above him. Now, General Flagg appeared on the cartoon of G.I. Joe, but apparently they got confused as to which character it was. So they drew General Flagg on the cartoon to look like General Austin, which is weird. And when uh, they eventually did have a character that looked like General Flagg on the cartoon that was named Colonel Sharp. So I guess they were trying to uh, correct that. So let's have a look at these firearms. Uh, first, I'll go with this, uh, the Gung Ho one. As I'll call it. And there he is with that. Holds that quite nicely. And that's going to fit into one of these holsters. And I'm going to say it fits into this holster. It looks like to me because uh, it, it, it's the longer. This is the shorter of the two holsters. And that's the shorter of the two guns. So there's that. Fits in there quite nicely. And then we have the second handgun. So let's go ahead and try that out. It's a little Desert Eagle looking, but it's a little smaller, I would think, than a Desert Eagle would be. But the trigger is definitely kind of vaguely Desert Eagle shaped. Like I said, I don't remember exactly what uh, what figure would have been the one this came with. It maybe was uh, maybe was Cover Girl, but I don't remember. Uh, she's back in my room right now, so I don't have her to compare. Oh, I forgot to mention the butterfly joints. There are butterfly joints on this figure, but. Uh, they do seem like they're a little, uh, how do I put this? They're not quite as effective as the butterfly joints often are because of, uh, just again, the jacket. I, I think a lot of the decisions that were made with this figure were made because of the jacket and all the detail involved and that they didn't want to interfere too much with any of that detail, which is probably a good call. I don't want to sound like I'm being overly critical of it. I would probably rather they put the effort into the jacket than the articulation in this case, because 
it's probably more important to General Hawk. He's he's not really he, he's not like it's not like he's a ninja or something. You don't really need him to you know move too much. Like not not more than your your average GI Joe figure. I will say I really like the way that it looks when it's when it's all together with the helmet and the goggles and everything. That kind of, I'm gonna turn off the light for a second, and then maybe we can get it to focus a little more, not be so washed out. There's a lot of detail to this face, and it's kind of hard for me to get it to focus on it with the camera. But trust me, this is a good head sculpt. I really like it. So, uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get this this gun out of his hand and see how it fits in this holster over here on his belt. Come on, you. Get in there. Ah, fits in there nicely. There we go. So, uh, so yeah, I'm going to take off the helmet again for a second. I'm going to look at his hair some more. And it is brown hair with, like, some uh, silver streaks, kind of kind of dry brushed onto it. It looks good. I think they did a good job. Now, uh, comic book purists, you know, and, and I would consider myself a comic book purist, uh, you know, we, we remember him as being blonde. We probably prefer for him to be blonde, but honestly, I think it works as far as like a, a translation of the figure, which the figure did have brown hair. So fair enough. <laughs> But yeah, they, they did a good job with it. Uh, I'm, I'm happy with it. So the original General Hawk figure, the accessories that he came with was he came with a helmet, he came with a backpack, and he came with a, a handgun. So, uh, but this guy, uh, they've been neglecting the backpacks lately in, uh, in, in terms of the classified figures. And honestly, like the, ha the backpacks have been kind of hit or miss with this line anyway. I mean, like, like half the time they don't even want to stay on the character's back. And if I have a complaint about the uh, the the series, it's been the backpacks that don't really want to go on the figures properly. But uh, so that's probably why why they that's probably a big part of the reason why they just kind of eschewed the backpacks. Every character that I've reviewed in this wave, uh, with the the two dreadnoughts and shockwave and this guy all of them should have come with backpacks uh hawk is the one of those that i i mind the least i have this jar of paint i forgot to put the lid back on there so just let me put the lid back on this paint real quick forgive me indulge me for a moment so so hawk but he's, he's technically supposed to come with a backpack but i don't really miss it I do wish the two dreadnoughts had come with backpacks. And I do wish that Shockwave had come with a backpack. I wish they'd found a way to make that work. The the only of this wave that actually had a backpack was Helix. And I don't think my original Helix figure, the, the Rise of Cobra one, had a backpack. So there's some irony there, isn't it? And even then it was a repaint of the uh the movie Storm Shadow backpack, which was one of the backpacks that I thought worked better among the backpacks in this line so far. And a lot of people would argue the movie figures aren't technically a part of the line. But they are numbered, so I guess they are, really. Anyway, there's what he looks like holding the shotgun, which the original... Uh, I keep saying the original General Hawk figure, and technically I guess it would be the original General Hawk, because it was first only as a general. But it wasn't called General Hawk yet. The figure was still just called Hawk. The first figure to actually officially be named General Hawk was the Jetpack one I was talking about earlier. But there he is with that. And I really should have uh, I really should have led with the grenade launcher now that I think about it. I'll tell you why in a second. So let's go ahead and get the grenade launcher into his hand. And that can be a little tricky. I just knocked the goggles off his head. That can be a little tricky because of the strap that's on here. And that can kind of get in the way a little bit. But you just kind of try to bend it out of the way as best you can. So there he is with the uh, the burp gun, the grenade launcher, uh, which is, you know, I believe was a dated weapon in 1982. That was like Vietnam era technology. And by the time we got to the 80s, like they were already having the, uh, the grenade launcher that just kind of attached to the bottom of your rifle. Like, uh, like, like what Leatherneck has. So, uh, technically this was like old school technology by that time. 
but he looks pretty cool holding it. It's a cool looking weapon. I don't really care if it's out of date. You know, I liked it when it came with the original gung ho, so I'm not going to complain about it. So we can put that over his shoulder. So even without a backpack to hold it, he's got a way to store that. And then you can put the shotgun in his hand. So I never really thought of giving General Hawk a shotgun. Normally, if I was going to give him any kind of weapon, I would give him, like, uh, as far as, like, you know, besides, like, the, the handgun he would have actually come with, like, uh, I, I tend to favor, like, uh, just a classic M16 or uh, the the uh, the standard G.I. Joe laser rifle, the one that came with Snow Job. I tend to like that with uh, General Hawk. So, uh, but there he is, all geared up. So we can store the uh, grenade launcher by having it slung over his shoulder, and he can hold the shotgun, and that way he's got all of his accessories. Uh, you can fit all the accessories onto the figure at once, which is always a nice thing to have. It would be cool if he had a backpack where he could hold both the shotgun and the uh, the grenade launcher on the backpack, but beggars can't be choosers. So <laughs> as long as as long as I can keep all the 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 accessories on the figure. Uh, I'm going to be happy with it. So am I happy with this figure? Yeah. Uh, there are some things that, that I wish could have been done a little bit differently. For example, I really wish that there was some way that the uh, the the strap on his, his shoulder holster could fit underneath that collar. Like if they'd actually bothered to make that collar like a, a separate piece and he could fit it underneath there, that would have been really cool. But uh, – I might just wind up taking the shoulder holster off. <laughs> I mean, I know that that's, that's a crazy thing to say because, you know, you think about that 85, 86 General Hawk figure. I go again. Uh, you think about that 86 General Hawk figure, you think about that shoulder holster. But I, honestly, like, like I, I think I might rather just, just have the, uh, the uh, ribbons and medals and everything be unencumbered there. I think that might be a better look. So. Uh, but I'm really happy with how this figure turned out. Uh, General Hawk is a figure that I don't feel like Hasbro gives a lot of love. I kind of feel like they try to they try to wedge Duke into that leader role, and Duke was really supposed to be like the uh, the first sergeant. So like uh, you know he was he was kind of more more like the guy who would be on the troops with the ground. This would be the guy who would be at back at the base. But this is it if he's got to go into a mission. Like, I always like to say that I kind of figured Duke would be a guy who would be more back at the base doing, like, administrative stuff at this point. But, uh, you know, I kind of feel like, like, if you've got a mission that that Duke is out in the field himself leading it, then the shit has hit the fan. <laughs> like, that's, that's, like, if you need Duke to do it, yeah, thing, things are, th things have gotten hairy. And if you need General Hawk, to be the guy out in the field calling the shots. Shit has really hit the fan. That's like Cobra Island Civil War kind of stuff going on. So <laughs> where it's got to be Hawk out there. But they did a really great job with this Hawk figure. I don't know if I would pointed it out, but he does have like a little name tab there that actually says Abernathy on it. So uh, yeah, General Hawk was one of those characters that they lost the rights to his name. I mentioned that earlier. And uh, I got kind of sidetracked with talking about some other stuff, but uh, but when when they lost the rights to the name, like they did with a lot of characters, and they brought him back in the early two thousands, they uh, they decided to try to change the name of the character to General Tomahawk, and like none of these name changes are really stuck. I think like a lot of the fans were just like, no, nah, I'm just going to keep calling him Hawk. He's always going to be Hawk to me. I'm going to keep calling this guy Shockwave. He's always going to be Shock Blast. No, screw that. He's Shockwave. You know, I'm not calling him Thunder. He's Thrasher. There's already a G.I. Joe character named Thunder, and you're calling him Thunder Blast. How can you call Thrasher Thunder? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, eventually, I think they found a lot of workarounds for that kind of stuff, so that's why you have his official name is now General Clayton Hawk Abernathy, because that's, like, way too specific for uh, for the, 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 the copyright gods to have a problem with, right? But he was definitely worth the wait. So that's pretty much it for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please make sure you like and subscribe and all that fun YouTube stuff down below. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this figure, and we will talk to you next time.